Before we get going with the episode, I just want to tell you something that I'm very excited about. We have now been joined by someone I've been using for a long, long time and I've kept them a secret to myself. But for my clients coming to Africa, I've been using Gracie Travel. Folks, if you are coming to Africa or anywhere in the world, in fact, but especially if you're traveling with guns, Gracie Travel are amazing. I've kept them to myself for a long time, but I'm putting it out there to you now. Enjoy the episodes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to season five of This Is Africa. This week, we're making our way north to the shores of Lake Kariba here in Northern Zimbabwe, where we're gonna be hunting with Dalton and York safaris for two of the dangerous seven, hippopotamus and the Nile crocodile. This area is really, really interesting because people inhabit the same land as the wildlife. So I'm going to show you a little bit what that's about. Anyway, we've got a long way to go. See you there. Swift Bullet Company presents This is Africa. Oh, look, 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 it's Dalton and the Rangers. <laughs> Dalton Tink, everyone, this is the Dalton of the Dalton and York. How's it going, guys? Where's Yorkie? He's just gone to the shooting range. All right. um, he's going to start in the rifles, so the guys can start off tomorrow. All right, I'll see you there just now. I'm just going to go and see the kid who was attacked by the crocodile. All right, cool. All right, but see you later. Cheers, buddy. See you Cheers, later. Dude. Cheers, man. So this is actually a field where they grow their maize, where we're going to meet Mr. Matthew, who got attacked by the crocodile. Hello, my. Listen, how are you? Fine. Fine, fine, fine. So we are going to get you the Matthew Setako tells me how he and two friends walked a long distance from home with the hopes of netting many fish in the shallows of the lakeshore. Unbeknown to them, they too were on the menu. Matthew scanned the water's surface for any signs of crocodiles. The water was eerily still that day. They had walked a long way. So they decided it was safe. Something deep in his stomach did not feel right. Yeah. Suddenly, beneath the water, something clamped onto his arm and he was trapped. Matthew's friends threw stones and shouted, but still the crocodile tugged. It was at this point, Matthew explains, that the crocodile did the infamous death roll and he was free. Matthew surrendered himself to his friends and watched in pain and disbelief as the beast swallowed his arm right in front of his eyes. Together, the friends decided to brave the predator-infested bush and headed for the nearest help, the hunting camp. We were all sitting at the bar, as you do when you get back in the evening from a hunt. You come to the bar, have a few drinks, and the next minute, my tracker, Jito, came running up and you could hear in his voice that there was a big problem. Yo, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are done. So we raced up, ran down to the car park and there was this young guy, his arm completely torn off and blood everywhere. Ah, it was, it was gruesome. We didn't really have anything for a tourniquet so I used a piece of rubber from a, from a tube on a tire and then bandaged it up as best as I could. I remember putting a plastic bag over it to stop any more dust and stuff getting on it. And then from there, we had already organized an ambulance, which took him to the nearest town, which is about another 260 k's. And he was put into surgery. It's been a little while since the incident, and uh, you can see here yeah, it started to heal. This is actually where the arm snapped, and here is where the arm end came off. Quite a story. and. Uh... You know, he's, what he was saying to me was that uh, the worst thing is that he can't go to school anymore because he's always 
He's always having to go to the hospital to get um, medication and they're really struggling for money for books and stuff. So he's got a good attitude about it. He still wants to, he still wants to carry on normal life. It's obviously very difficult for him. Maintaining the peace between villages and wildlife is a very, very important part of conservation here in Africa. Hunters' dollars go a long way in ensuring that the villagers want to keep the animals around. You see, although those animals pose a huge danger to the villagers, it's those same animals that provide the promise of a brighter future for the villagers through Hunters' dollars. Oh yeah, this is a Winchester 375 H&H. &H. Uh, it's the first gun I ever bought to come over to Africa about 14 years ago. Oh, I just love the camaraderie that these guys bring and how nice it is. Beautiful area, great game, and uh, just great hanging out with great friends. So we've seen a hippo bull, but it's quite open to get to where they are. So we're just gonna wait for them to go down and then we'll sneak forward and then just wait for them to come back up again. So, just forward of the ear, yeah. and about that much low. Okay. Kind of between the ear and the eye. Okay, there. Right there. Between the ear and the eye. That swift bullet smoked him. So we've seen him for a few weeks now and his tusks look like they're about to come through the skin. That's so sharp and luckily we found him here now. And I hear another hippo has just gone to where this one's gone down. Just going past, you can see all the bubbles. See this tree here? Yeah? Yeah. I was sitting there and a big one came running out the weeds here. No. Through my fishing rods and I tried to run through the mud here. <laughs> hunting with Matt's like hunting with a brother. Ah, oh, you are taking too long, man. Wanda! <laughs> you can joke, have fun. You're always very comfortable around each other. This is Africa is brought to you by African Sporting Creations. Swift bullets are very well known by everyone in the hunting industry as being a really tough bullet. When they first came out with the Swift A-frame, it was the bullet that revolutionized softs. Until that point, softs used to break, break apart and, and, and fall apart and, and were, a little, were very soft. These are really tough bullets. They don't, they don't lose a lot of, they don't lose, in fact, they lose very little weight at all. Sometimes nothing at all. And um, they mushroom perfectly every single time. The way they're designed, the Swift A-frame is just known for being a really good bullet for Africa. One bullet we don't know so much about about the Swifts is the Sorocos. Very popular in North America. They're a little bit softer than the A-frame, but they hold together well. Very, very precise bullet. Very sleek, good looking design. And it works very well for African Plains game and our cats. Very good for lion and leopard. And then finally, the last one is the Breakaway Solid. Now, very few people know about this breakaway solid. This little black honeycomb type thing on the front is only to helping with feeding. Underneath that, it's concave. So it's got like a, a dip design which helps for going, making a straight wound channel. The breakaway solid penetrates further than any other solid on the market and I will guarantee you that. I've seen a 458 shoot an elephant in the, from behind and the bullet was, we found on the front shoulder of the elephant. Now anyone who knows how big the Botswana bulls get, that is some serious, serious penetration. Earlier this year, with the breakaway solid, again we shot a buffalo from behind, went straight through the entire buffalo, out the front of the neck here and lodged in the horn of the buffalo. That is incredible penetration. Folks, when you're using a solid, what you want is penetration. The Swift Breakaway Solid is very hard to beat. In, in fact, I'll guarantee you it's impossible to beat. Swift A-Frame, Chiraco, and the new Breakaway Solid. All bullets without equal. Available in components and loaded ammunition. Contact SwiftBullets.com for product availability.
Guys, our first and only sponsor out of South Africa, Ultra Nexus, are absolutely amazing. They've got all the Pulsar goods. If you've been watching any of my Hyena Hitman episodes, you will know that these are amazing. Hyenas run away from any sort of flashlight, so this has been a big game changer for us. Um, in terms of uh, predator control, I've got a buddy in Namibia who's been using the Pulsar goods on his uh, game ranch and he says it has paid for itself through and through because he's shot so many jackals because they just obviously no, don't even know you're there. So guys, check out Ultra Nexus for all these goods. They've got flashlights. These flashlights are absolutely amazing. Um, if it was dark, you would see, but uh, this thing makes you feel like, like God with the sun in your hands. Hearing protection, ear mores. These are very reasonably priced and they are so comfortable and so good. You, I'll actually challenge you to find a better set of ear, ear defenders than these. Um, they also do come with Bluetooth options, uh, insert, little ear insert type ones, these proper cover overs. They've got all the different options and they are very reasonably priced. So have a look and see. What I'm most excited about for Ultra Nexus is the Havilon knives have now arrived. And I've got mine, it's called a Barracuda Blaze. It's, you gotta have a look at this knife. It is one seriously good looking skinning knife. Look at that bad boy. They are seriously, seriously sharp. So just be careful. Um, and yeah, get it while stock last because they don't have a lot of stock in South Africa, but Get hold of Ultra Nexus, they will be able to tell you where any of these products that I've just mentioned are available close to you in South Africa. Back to the episode. This is Africa is brought to you by the Houston Safari Club Foundation. Like Titanic, no icebergs, but hippos and crocodiles. Barume, mvuri apa ine naro, and this kuchamba. Well, they better hurry up because they're going to sink just now. But check that it's about to nose dive. Barume. <laughs> And it's filling up the record. Thank you. It's we are, we are, we are, we are. No, it's slowly. Musa bouncer, shall I? They're going to go down. I think I think they're not gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> you just made it, and that's why we have the problems with the crocodiles. Early this morning we came out and looked for a hippo that we'd been watching for quite a few weeks now. Luckily we found him, and yeah, Matt did a beautiful shot on him. And now we have some bait. Yeah, wapinda. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> He's like, hey, we're doing an Ome um, McNabb. Shot a hippo, well, caught a right. catfish, and now it's left to get something else. What's it, a bird? A bird. 22 on a duck. No. Told you, we got to do a McNabb. What? What's next? Bird. What of a crocodile? Or a crocodile. <laughs> no, but that's not a McNabb, though. Boya normally is a phenomenal shot, but this time <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Four female. Those bushes right there. Okay, you see, I see him. In that gap there. This weight is going to come out. He's coming out behind the back. He's going to go. Oh, 
Over him, over him, he stopped. Come. Things big. Don't worry, it's fine. Okay, I'm thinking it's in here. So I'm gonna go and try and flush him out. Okay. If he comes out and he's not running, <laughs> whack him. <laughs> yes, that's the plan. Because we hunted together so long now and we have a close relationship. If he does make a mistake whilst we're hunting, I can give him a look or tell him, hey, what are you doing? Give him a bit of, bit of nonsense for it. Good fun. This is Africa is brought to you by Swift Bullet Company. I hunt for escape. I hunt for conservation. I hunt for tradition. I hunt for empowerment. I hunt for the challenge. I hunt for the adventure. And I hunt for me. The Houston Safari Club Foundation is hugely instrumental in conducting conservation across the globe. These guys are huge advocates for hunting, raising a lot of money. They educate a lot of people. They promote hunting to the up and coming youths, which is absolutely important for the preservation of hunting and conservation on this planet. And they are experts in conservation. So if you would like to contribute to conservation here in Africa or anywhere in the world, or just conservation in general, you can do so very simply by just joining the Houston Safari Club Foundation. Just by joining, you are directly contributing some money towards conservation in the world. So do it. Folks, back to the episodes. This is Africa is brought to you by Pulsar. Way high. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. <laughs> it was like that far above him. It was Buck Plague, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. Next time. I, I thought you were still looking at him to figure out if he was still. No, no, decent. I said yes. <laughs> still. Uh. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Second miss on Bushbuck. It's going good. <laughs> As hunters, we all have good days and bad days. And I think this was just one of those situations. Things weren't working out perfectly, and it was just how it worked out. But come look at this crook. You see this, where this water is right here? Yeah. Off this red bank? Yeah, yeah. Go straight up the island, there's a brown thing lying on the side. Big crook. Just find a very nice crocodile. But the dilemma is it's on the other side. And we know there's a good croc in the area. So we pretty much have a full hippo for croc bait. So we've got time. Road to nowhere. When, I, when we first saw that croc, I was very confident that we could get him on bait because time of year, it was warm and they normally, that time of year, they feed aggressively. Our elephants are leaving the area. They're moving from the island into mainland to go for more feeding. 
Take his snorkel gun out. Ooh. Is it over his head? Uh, it might be a bit deep. They do, they're very good swimmers though. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> Pretty neat out here with the elephants, looking for croc, baiting for croc, having a good time. So we've just gone down to the bottom of the river on the Umi and we're just doing a drag and dropping some lungs and liver that'll float and hopefully once they start chomping start bringing them in where we're going to tie the meat up against the corner of another bay up here where we saw two big crocs yesterday. So there's a few things you can do to get crocs on bait. You can chum, you throw blood in the water, throw stomach, hanging baits above the water for a couple of days just to bring in the crocs with a smell. You can try and call them in. It just brings in those bigger ones very quickly sometimes, as long as they don't see you. Nothing big enough for now to be continued. So plan B on a crocodile that doesn't come to bait is you've got to find where he sunbombs. I saw blood. Push back. Beautiful. Well done, buddy. Well done, big guy. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so these bushbuck is the chubby bushbuck, and they generally always hang around in the thick stuff in the jess and here up against the lake shore eating the green grass and that's what we caught him doing this afternoon was in one of these little gullies eating the green grass from the lake going down and here awesome shot and beautiful bush buck we're just battling to get to where the croc is any noise we make on the boat will send vibrations through the water and the croc will start again from scratch. So this croc hasn't been coming to bait. So we're just trying to make another plan to get to where he is. This is Africa is brought to you by Right On Optics. Seven to ten days floating down the Zambezi River. If you don't know about the River God, check it out. It's a once in a lifetime experience. In fact, I do it every year because I'm, I'm hooked basically and I love fishing. These guys are bucket list material. You've got a private chef, you've got a private guide, walks in the wilderness of the famous Mauna Pools National Park. If you're looking for a tiger fishing experience, this is the one. Check them out, there's the details. These guys are bucket list material. This is Africa is brought to you by Swift Bullet Company. So the only plan I was thinking that could work is in the morning, yeah. early, before they start moving, we come here with the boat like we've done, we get off and we go and sit in the trees. Okay, so follow the jawline to where it ends, where the pivot point is, there's a, a hard shiny bone, looks like kind of like half a golf ball that's been cut just behind that to break the spine, dead center. 
And if it's slightly quartering, you just come back a little bit more. Because remember, the bullet's going to be going at an angle. Yep. Second shot right on the shoulder, third shot right on the shoulder. And then we wait for him to come out. When he's out, we'll come up around here, take our shoes off yep. on our hands and knees. Come up here, we'll set something up here now quick, yep. like a brick wall, yep. and then take the shot from here. You see where the smile ends? Oh yeah. Then two inches behind where that smile ends. Yeah. Dead center of the neck. Too risky here. Okay. He's only got the half of his neck sticking out. Right. And we want to see more of him. Right. You can't even get a second shot into it. Yeah. And if he starts thrashing, he's in the water. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't confident on the quartering shot. It's just, it was quite risky. And I'd like to see more of it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I can't even see the teeth that they need. Yeah. Thickness or not open his mouth up. No. So let's back out slowly. You go first. Seven o'clock this morning. It's, it's now ten past four in the afternoon. So we're gonna go and sneak in and see what is happening. Let's go. Look, if you pull the shot off perfectly, it's gonna work. Reload, reload, it's going. I had a deep gut-wrenching feeling of, of bad, bad things not going to work out how we need them to. <laughs> Lots of weeds. It was like a grass carpet over the top. The water was deep, so it's not that you like you could get in there with the boat easily and see the bubbles if it had died deeper down. So it was, it was very worrying that we weren't going to succeed in finding it. Oh dear, a slight spot of bother we have here. Folks, I'm sorry to do this to you, leaving you cliffhanging in your own living rooms. Until next time, we'll see you right here on This Is Africa. Next time on This Is Africa, finding a wounded crocodile in a lake full of monsters is no easy feat. Will the boys pull it off? Or will the giant reptile get away for good? There you go, folks. Thanks for watching another episode of TIA. Please join us next time. You'll see what happens with that other crocodile. It's amazing. And we've got more, more, more episodes to come. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to these videos. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps me a lot. Please, thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.